Hey guys, so for those of you that have just watched the video on how to install RetroArch on chip and pocket chip, this is what happens when you've installed it on the pocket chip. Um, you can boot it from the terminal or you can put an icon here to RetroArch, which I've done, and you can simply boot it up on pocket chip. Now I've changed the keys a little bit round, as I mentioned in the previous video, and how to do that. Um, you may want to do that because it makes it more comfortable to play. But once we've got some ROMs on here and we've uh, We've scanned the directory, that's right, once you've got the ROMs you need to scan the directory or folder in which they're in uh, or you can scan the direct file itself. Once we've done that, uh, emulators will appear up here. Um, as you can see we've got uh, SNES emulator, Game Boy emulator, Game Boy Advance emulator. When you first boot a game, which we'll show now, it will actually... Uh, that doesn't help at all. It does not help. Ah, there we go, I press the wrong button. If we press enter and we press run, it should ask us which emulator that we've got installed we want to use. And I've got two installed. Uh, Meteor seems to be pretty good. And I am looking to actually check out every emulator on here and find out which are the best ones in order to do a video on that so you guys know which are the best ones to use and the most compatible. But I found that Meteor Game Boy Advance Emulator works pretty well. Um, we simply press enter and then we press enter again. Once we've done that, um, it will actually run this game uh, and it will actually default that emulator to this ROM. So please be aware of that. Some, uh, some of the games don't run at full speed some games do, but this all depends on which emulator you have installed. You may find an emulator that runs the games at full speed. I may have an emulator that doesn't. As I said, I need to check through all of them to find out which is the best ones. But it scales to the screen better and looks better than other emulators that I have installed thus far. So I'm unsure on how to quit without pressing the escape button, but if we press the escape button or control Q, it will quit RetroArch completely and then it will require a reboot. We probably can change the key bindings, but I haven't done that yet. So you can see here that it all works pretty well. Some people have said the audio doesn't work great. I have not checked out the audio yet, so I cannot state that. But once I've checked that out, again, I will do that in the video that shows you uh, which emulators are the best. We will check out how to fix the audio. But as you can see, it runs pretty well. And uh, you see that little flashing there? That happens sometimes, like it does on the chip, but if most of the time it, it doesn't pose a threat. In fact, it only usually happens when you press down on the D-pad and not up. Oh, hang on, it does happen when you press up sometimes. I don't know, but it just happens. It's just one of them things. But yeah, once you scan the file directory which the ROMs are in, you can then see that the ROMs do come up here. Now, there are some ROMs like free third party bootlegs that do not show up here even if you scan them, but if you scan the file directly they will show up here in your history uh, that you've played them and as you can see we can then just boot up Pokemon Cock version uh, and it will run as usual with the default emulator selected. And uh, as you can see that this emulator that I'm running right now works pretty damn well. So you can see that it also scales as the screen and Professor Oak fucks a lot of Pokemon in this game. Yeah, but again I'm unsure, I haven't checked the key bindings on how to quit a ROM and just exit back out into uh, RetroArch, but exiting and booting it back up is pretty damn quick anyway. So uh, yeah, this pretty much shows you how it works and some games like Pokemon Fire Red don't show up uh, here some games some f first party games don't show up here either so you will need to make sure that you scan the file uh, the entire file itself in order to do that um, and then it shows up in your history so you can just boot it out from there which isn't too much of an issue again it's exactly the same as on the chip you load a core and uh, you can see what I've got installed now but uh, if we want we can go to download core and uh, it will show up all the uh, emulators available to us, which is great. To go back on the menu, we simply press the, the simply press this button here, which is probably the back button. So yeah, everything works as it should, and nothing else really needs changing. I'm sure this will be updated in time, but everything works as it should. 
and if you followed the chip and pocket chip tutorial this should be uh, the end result and you should be able to just play um, play some games like I said I've not checked out with them so I don't know exactly what's compatible so you may have some compatibility issues but I'm hoping to check all those out with different uh, ROMs and uh, seeing what's what and then hopefully we can build a list of the best compatible emulators that work with the pocket chip and the chip but as far as it goes this seems to have better compatibility than any other emulators I've tried so if you like this video hit the like button if you didn't hit the dislike button and as always please do comment and subscribe I shall see you very soon with another one cheers